My name is Mrs. Otulaseka, and I'm a counselor within Rochester Community Schools. Our focus on this um, month's newsletter is on engineering and advanced manufacturing, and our special guest is Mr. Zach from Continental. So welcome, Mr. Zach. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Great. Thanks for being here. So first off, um, Mr. Zach works for Continental, which is a worldwide company, but located in Auburn Hills. And Mr. Zach, would you mind telling our audience a little bit about what job you have, a short job description? Yeah, absolutely. So right now, uh, the job I have is innovation manager. And what that essentially means is I get to look at future technology that all of us might use in the next five to 10 years and try to build that out and how we would really bring that to a product or to something you, your parents, everybody could actually uh, touch, feel, use. Uh, so it's a really exciting opportunity I've got. What is a project that you're working on right now that you can speak to? That really Yeah, perfect. So uh, one thing I'm working on right now is actually cars that drive themselves. We've heard a lot about this. It's been rumored. Um, essentially, when you talk about cars that drive themselves and all of us are sitting in them, we have to make sure that they act somewhat like a car that's driven by a human acts. So one of my big jobs is to kind of study how people would navigate through a situation and how this robot really is navigating through. And I don't want it to be herky jerky, right? I, I need it to be smooth like you're, you're driving in your own car. So that's one project I've got going right now is that human experience inside a automated driving vehicle and making it act like a, a real person driving. That sounds incredible. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> um, included in this newsletter is a video that you had shared with me um, that I wanted the kids to be able to see you inside of a car, kind of explaining what that process is a little bit more as well. So be sure to check that out, students. Um, the other thing, Mr. Zach, can you tell us a little bit about kind of what got you into, into this field of interest? Maybe what did you enjoy doing as a kid? What were maybe some toys that you played with? And yeah, yeah. So, so um, all right. Honestly, I have two sisters, one older sister and one younger sister. And um, the toys around were Barbies, right? So uh, I did. I played a lot of Barbies. Uh, we, we had the, the cool Corvette, though. It was a pink Corvette. And I also was a runner at a pretty young age. So I liked running the mile and the half mile. You can check my stats out online if you want to. I'm, I'm decent. I didn't break four minutes, but I'm low 430s. Um, but when I was growing up, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to design or work on cars that are faster than me? Right? I'm pretty confident. I like, I like running quick. I like bike, biking quick. And I thought, you know what? It'd be neat to work on Corvettes when I grow up. It'd be neat to work on trucks. My dad had a diesel pickup truck um, going from his job as a veterinarian on uh, horses and, and cows. So seeing, seeing those trucks and those cars really got me interested in that field as a pretty young, at a pretty young age. The other thing that really kind of steered me towards this engineering path was math and science were a little bit more intuitive. They were a little easier for me to understand quickly than English. We were talking before this a little bit about capitalizing the first letter of your name and things like that. That English and grammar didn't didn't stick as easily as some of the engineering or, or math related classes stuck. So I think that also helped influence it. Then yes, I did have some of the early Legos. So I loved building with Legos. Um, they're way more complex systems now. I've looked at some that my nephew has and it's amazing what he's putting together with Legos with real working motors. That's that's awesome. And robotics has really taken off. I didn't have so much opportunity there. We had remote control cars though that I loved playing with, driving off as big a jumps as I could to try to clear the, the neighbor's cat, whatever it was. Um, and the other thing that I really enjoyed um, was painting or drawing, right? And so having that creative outlet to draw something on paper and then go try to build it, right? With a Lego or something like that. Or my dad had a nice wood shop in the basement. So trying to cut pieces on the jigsaw to, to make that boat or whatever. 
those are some things that really kind of helped me hone my skills as understanding that engineering or building something, building trait would be a pretty neat one for me to follow. Mm -hmm. So just to plug also, we have Lego League for our younger kids in the school district. And then we also have robotics as our kids start to get older. Cool. Yeah, lucky. so yeah. some different, they are lucky, some different advancements, I guess, within the area. Can you speak to maybe a class in high school that you took that you feel, it sounds as though math classes, certainly. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe a physics class or intro to engineering also kind of helps yeah. on this type of path. There's two that pop to my mind right now, actually, for what I do in my career, right? I have to sell a vision. I have to sell an idea to everybody around me that this is going to be the way of the future. So to do that, actually, speech class um, and understanding how to present well, uh, whether it was um, uh, show and tell, then it was when I grow up speeches, uh, then it was a formal speech and technical writing course in college those really helped me um, be able to tell the story for this future vision. And yes, engineering aside, that was probably what's more important in my career right now. The other one that really sticks out was, um, it, I think it was called drafting or CAD design and drafting or something like that, that I, I took when I was in high school. And there we actually got the opportunity to draw on Autodesk or AutoCAD or whatever, a house design. And the, the winner of the class got their house built um, for Habitat for Humanity. I didn't win, my house didn't get built. I think I had a little too much uh, decorative pieces in the foyer or something like that. But that taught me that you can draw, you can create and produce yourself a living there. So actually when I looked at careers, architecture was right up there with engineering. And it just really fell down to um, what was a better fit for my university career um, and what universities had what to offer for, for that career outlook. And then looking at who did that. So I had an aunt that was an, um, an architect, or I guess it'd be my aunt's sister that was an architect. And I had a, a neighbor that was an engineer and kind of asking them what, what really helped there. But I would say speech class, understanding how to present, show and tell your ideas, get others excited about what you have to say. I know that's not always a good thing. We gotta be quiet and listen. Active listening is a very important part of speaking and presenting. Um, and then I would say this, um, this CAD or intro to, to design was a, another thing that really helped steer the, the, the ship a little bit towards that engineering. And you, you've touched on a couple of things, classes in school, um, toys that you've played with, but also you touched on really speaking to other people around in your circle, um, or maybe even um, job shadowing, taking a look at what somebody's job is to help really define what you're interested in. Um, and along the way, it sounds like you have um, you know the importance of really refining your skills and your interests to find that career that makes the most sense for you. So that is something we talk about a lot with our students. So okay, yeah, it makes and, sense. But I love that um, kind of touched on all those pieces. So thank you for that. The other thing that you touched on a little bit, um, a question that I typically like to ask people in certain professions is, what different personality traits do you feel like you have, or skills that you have that really benefit um, you being in the job that you're in? Yeah. So there's a a wide range of engineering talent that you're gonna find or those in a technical career like myself that you're gonna find. You're gonna find some that are very introverted. They can very well focus on a task and be pretty quiet with their work. They can be pretty quiet about um, their creativity. I'm not that. I have a hard time being quiet. I have a hard time not getting very excited about a certain thing, a topic, whatever. Um, and I'm very curious. And the curiosity, I think, is one that crosses all uh, bridges of what I do. If you're not super curious and you don't like to challenge things, show me why that doesn't work. Um, then, then it's a tough sell for engineering or, or a position like mine. Because my job is to take a look at what we have right now and why it's that way and say, mm, I think we should just change that. And that curiosity, that, um, that intuition to just 
change things for the sake of changing things just to see if it'll work. So build your Legos with less of a base and see if it'll tip over um, and then find out why it tipped over and then keep that small base, but add pieces to one side to see if you can keep it from tipping over. Th those sorts of things, um, I would say personality traits are what bode themselves well for a career like mine where your, your job is to basically say, this is the future, it's not today, it's, it's what's tomorrow and here's why. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, you've covered pretty much all of my questions. Is there anything else that you'd like to add for the sake of, of our kids at Rochester Community Schools? I would. So to be honest, there's one other thing that really helped shake my career. And you mentioned job shadowing, but what I had the opportunity to do since the age of 14 was hold a job. I worked at a hardware store, fixing screens, bicycles, small motors. Uh, people brought in their lawnmowers, things like that. I got an opportunity to get paid, right? And work on things, which was pretty cool. But also I had customers, right? So you had to learn how to talk to people, answer questions, ask when you didn't know, tell people you didn't know. Um, that was very important. So for those that are of the age, I would really encourage you to try to get jobs where you interact with other people um, or interact in a field that you might find interesting. Mine was technical, so working on that worked really well. Um, and then that also helped pay for my future education, right? So uh, all through college, I had a, a job at Continental, actually. They sent me to Berlin, Germany while I was in college, and they paid me for it. Um, so I was watching World Cup soccer matches after work uh, live while it was going on. And that that's invaluable how that experience also helps. So it's outside of school, I understand, but at the same time, I know there's gonna be opportunities for all of these kids to find job um, opportunities and I would encourage it, really, I would. Awesome, because it also teaches us how to balance, balance throughout our life, balance time, time management, communication. I mean, there's so many skills that, that you gain by having a job. Um, yeah, absolutely. Came to mind, um, what, is, what is your actual degree? So my degree is mechanical engineering. It's funny, um, I studied mechanical engineering, but my first job full-time with Continental was software. Uh, so developing computer programs for the cars that drive themselves, teaching them how to steer and brake. It was more a, adapting um, what I knew about mechanical systems that gave me that opportunity. If I would have said, no, sorry, I don't know anything about software and gave up, uh, sure, that could have been a chance, but I didn't take it that way. I took it as, okay, I don't know much about software right now, but I know about mechanical. And so that was the degree I chose. I think mechanical engineering gives you robotics, give you a really wide range of tools to use. And that's what it's really about when you're trying to find a career. If your goal is career, the, the bridge you take to get there should be as wide as possible. So you can fork off if you need to at the end there. And so mechanical engineering, robotic, those types of degrees give you an opportunity, mechatronics um, to bridge off if you've got to, uh, because you find something else interests you or a, a job just isn't available and another one is. Mm -hmm. So I think it's be broad there if you can. So just to add another, you said mechatronics. We offer mechatronics through Oakland Technical Campus for those of you that are interested, which is an awesome. Okay opportunity for our juniors and our seniors. And there are many, many jobs in mechatronics from my understanding. There are, yep. Many. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Zach. Um, I think our, our community is gonna learn a lot from you and um, you know, you just sharing your pieces on the, the car and how to make them more human without the human in it. Um, well, the humans in it, but without the human driving it. Um, yeah. Fascinating. So thank you so much. I appreciate your You're time. welcome. Oh, my pleasure.